Welcome to How To with Instant Atlas Double Map Template. If you would like some information on how to create a dynamic report, please refer to the How To with Instant Atlas Publisher video. The data in this report is purely fictitious, so if you'd like some information on how to put your own data into a report, please refer to the How To with Instant Atlas Excel Data Manager video. On the screen here you can see I've got my Theme 1, Indicator 1, 2005. But I'd like to change that to a different theme, indicator and date. I click on my Data button which will open my Data Explorer window. I click on the theme I'd like to choose, the indicator and the date. Now you can see that that's changed in the map and the table and the scatter plot. If you have any filters set up in your Excel workbook, you can, this filter button will appear. And you can see here that I've got a filter set up for zones in Edinburgh. If I click on zones here, it shows me the different zones that I have available. And I can choose one of these by selecting, for example, Edinburgh North. You can see now I've only got Edinburgh North showing here, and it shows in both maps. Another important thing to note is that I've only got the areas that are currently available in that filter in my table and my scatter plot. I can remove a filter by going to Filters and Remove Filter. Down here I've got my legend for my first map. I have got my different classes here and I have my contextual geography and in this case my contextual geography is postcode districts. This is symbolized by a red outline there, a border. And I've got my background mapping. If I turn that on you can see now I can see the background mapping for the Edinburgh area. If I go into the legend settings I can change the border color of my base geography. So let's change that here. I can change the transparency so I can drag this down to around 0.2 for example and you can see that it's a lot lighter there in the background. Okay, I can see the background very clearly. Now if I drag this all the way up to 1 you can see I can't see the background through that base geography at all. So I'm going to just bring that back down to around about where it was before so I can see some of that background mapping. Okay. So now I'd like to change my map palette that's showing. Currently you can see it's a, a range of blues. I'm going to change that now to this green palette. And then I can also reverse the palette. So you can see up here it's, it's light for the lowest colour and dark for the highest colour there. And I can reverse that, as you can see now. And I can also change the number of classes. So if I take this down here, I can take it down to, say, three classes. And you can see how that's changed over here in the legend. That's just the classes with numbers in them. Uh, if there's any classes that have, for example, no data, that will appear as an additional class. I can change the classifier, currently on quantile to anything else in this list. Now let's choose equal interval and that changes my classes here. Let me close that legend settings. I can turn off my postcode district and my background mapping and you can see very clearly what I've done there. I've put the black border on there and I've changed, I've reversed the palette color here and changed it to green. Over to the map now, I can zoom into the map a set extent by clicking on zoom in. I can zoom out to a set extent using zoom out. And I can zoom to full extent using this magnifying glass button here. Now if I hold shift and draw a box there, I can zoom to an extent that I have uh, created with that box. If I select individual areas, you can see that's highlighting in orange there. The area that I'm hovered on is in this light blue color. And you can also see that I've got a tooltip coming up for each of the areas that I hover on. 
For example, this one here is EH14 for 450. So that's the value 450. Now if I hold down control and select a number of areas, I can select more than one area at a time. And I can also right click and clear selection. It was all of the ones that I've got selected. If I move over to this help button over on the side, if I click on this help button, you'll see that a, another page will appear. And this gives me lots of information on how to use this dynamic report. I've got my data table on the right hand side. My data table here has my names of all of my postcode sectors in this column here. Uh, if I select I, one from this column, you can see that it also selects it in the maps and also in the scatter plot as well. If I click on this zoom to button, it will zoom to the area that I have chosen there. You can clear that selection, zoom to full extent. I can also sort this table by clicking on this button here. You can also do that for each of these other ones as well. My map 1 and map 2 information. If I go down to map 2 now, you can see that I've got my theme 1, indicator 1, 2005. So this is a different data set here than what we're looking at in the first map. I can change the colors and the transparency and border color along with the classifiers all in this legend settings here. And I can also use the legend in the same way by turning on the background mapping and the postcode district here. The map is used in the same way, the same zooming functionality and selection functionality. And then I've got the scatter plot on the bottom right hand corner. Now the scatter plot shows if there's any correlation between the two um, data sets that I've chosen. You can see here that I've got a line going across, a faint line there, and that's saying that there's uh, no significant correlation between these two data sets. If it was going from bottom left to top right, however, you would say that there was a significant positive correlation between the two data sets. Each of the points, if I hover on them, you can see the postcode sector that I'm looking at and also the X and Y values for those. Now the X and Y values are just the values that are in the map 1 and map 2. You can see down here I've got my X and Y axis here. I've got some labels on them. And I can also scroll in my data table. If I right click I can at clear filter, reset the layout, I can do a print preview. I can also export, if I want to export, I can export to JPEG and PNG by clicking on this. And I can also export either the full screen or the individual components. I can get more information about this Instant Atlas um, and also the settings in about Adobe Flash Player. That's how easy it is to use the Instant Atlas Double Map Template Dynamic Report. If you want any further information on how to publish this report, remember that you can refer to the How To with Instant Atlas Publisher video.